Welcome everyone to this episode of the Ask Jason Jellia Show. I'm Jason Jellius, Michigan Realtor. I appreciate you tuning into this episode. Uh, if you're new to this show, I welcome you, uh, as well as if you are a loyal watcher. So I really appreciate uh, everyone who finds these episodes valuable. Now I wanna go ahead and just dive right into this. So I have 10 questions that you should ask the prior homeowner or homeowners, if there's more than one, uh, this could be when you're at closing, you're the buyer, you just took ownership of this house and you're stalling time while the title rep is making copies of your closing documents and whatnot. So you can, you know, ask them questions. Hey, and this isn't basic questions like, uh, do you have the garage door opener or how many keys do you have to the house? These are solid questions that you should be asking actually. So the first one is, what are the neighbors like? And by the way, if you can, if you have the opportunity to actually ask these questions before you even submit an offer, that's even better. However, many times you don't get the opportunity, okay? So what are the neighbors like? Um, are there signs that could point to issues? Uh, too many, you know, dogs that bark uh, or uh, blight, which again, you probably should have seen this uh, prior to, to actually submitting an offer. However, it doesn't hurt to just ask him, hey, <laughs> are you know what are the neighbors like uh and by the way they're not required as a as the former owner to actually provide any details but you'll be surprised what they'll say especially after you've signed okay question two is what home improvement project do you wish you had done so was there something that you wanted to get done in the home and you just didn't Again, it's kind of a personal question, but it kind of gives you an idea because they may say, oh, you know, I wish we changed the layout of the basement or I wish we updated the bathroom or I wish we did this or this or that, right? It's a good thing to know. So, um, and by the way, that that tends to, to have a seller slash prior homeowner open up about things, okay? Uh, and they'll maybe provide insights that you haven't considered. Question three is how much roughly do you pay for utilities they can give you an idea ultimately the usage right is going to be different so for example if you are a, if you are coming in as a couple but they had two kids their usage is going to be way more than uh, yours will be so it's a great opener but it also gives you an idea so that you you get an idea as far as how much the water bill will be if you have a water bill uh you know, how much energy will be, things like that, okay? Now, question four is, um, are any of the appliances covered by warranties? Do you have any warranties? If so, do you have the manuals or do you have that information? Many times uh, I've seen sellers, especially when I advise them to do this, is uh, they will leave out home warranty information, whether it's printed or it's on a flash drive, uh, but, they will have manuals ready for the new homeowner and many times they bring them to closing or they leave them out on the counter uh, for the new homeowner. And they'll say, yeah, the stove uh, has a warranty on it or the furnace does, whatever it is. So always ask, do you have an extended warranty and are they transferable, okay? Another one on this one, by the way, is actually uh, you, if you have a basement leak and you have a professional company fix that many times, in my experience and in my area, they offer a lifetime transferable warranty, okay? So you wanna make sure that you have that. Question five is where is the water and where is the gas shutoff valves? You would think that this question would be asked during a home inspection period. However, there's so many other things that a home inspector is focused on and they're trying to, trying to basically give you a report card of the home. And so this is something that's not really that important unless you have to add a water shutoff, which I have seen that and I've had to personally do that with the help of my father-in-law on our first, well, actually second home. Uh, our first place was a condo, but this was our home and they had no water shutoff valves under the sink, which they should be there. So we had to add them, but simply ask, hey, where's the gas shutoff, right? You wanna know where these things are just in case of an emergency, the water shutoff the main one that goes into the house or uh, under the sinks, you wanna know where those are at. Now, don't be surprised if the prior homeowner has no idea where that is because many times people don't, 
but you should as a new homeowner. Question six is, has there been any insurance claims made on the property? Now this, this is kind of a loaded question because if they didn't disclose any issues uh, in the disclosures, this could cause a potential problem. However, I would still ask this, hey, have you ever made any insurance claims on this property? They don't have to really tell you that part, although they're supposed to disclose any issues that they're aware of. Uh, but it could also uh, uh, give you the opportunity to get better insurance coverage. Maybe there was an issue uh, and that will help better prepare you to get insurance on the home, okay? Uh, number seven, question seven is, um, was the heating and cooling system serviced regularly? Okay, maybe some of these questions are loaded as I'm going over them. However, you have the right to ask. They don't have to provide you these details, but um, you know, considering that the average cost to replace a, a heating and cooling system is about seven to 10 grand, I believe, uh, you wanna make sure that you simply ask this question. Have you serviced this regularly? And if not, when was the last time you did? And can you recommend a company uh, for example, if you've had someone come out annually, you might want to have them come back out uh, and see how much they charge and what not, but they're familiar with your system. Question eight, have you done any renovations or repairs? Repairs is the key word here because renovations might be obvious, right? Yeah, you know, I updated the bathroom and I updated the kitchen or I, you know, uh, I painted the garage, that's great, but repairs. Uh, did they fix something that was behind a wall? Did they have to redo a pipe? Uh, did something go wrong? Did they have to, uh, you know, fix a plug? What, whatever it is, just find out. Um, even if it was done by a pro, it's good to know what type of updates have been made. Uh, that way you are aware of it and it's not a surprise. On a personal note here, we had a surprise because we had a leak coming through the basement wall and I'm like, what's going on with this? And it wasn't fully disclosed. All right, but they had it They had it fixed and they used tar on the basement wall, which by the way, we had to tear out the drywall, okay? But what happened was we had to get the whole thing replaced and fixed. And we couldn't really do anything about it because he gener the former owner generally said that there was a leak in the basement and they had it fixed. We had it fixed the right way by a proper company. So question nine, how are the schools? You can ask this, you should ask this, even if you don't have kids, because schools play a major part in terms of home values. And, um, you know, uh, I guess it, like the overall attraction of a neighborhood, okay? If you have great schools, uh, it tends to be better for homeowners. So how are the schools? And it's crucial, again, even if you don't have kids, homes in desirable school districts tend to sell for higher prices, they just do. Many times people look at schools, even if you don't have kids. And question 10, are there any contractors or repair services that you would recommend? I kind of touched um, on this earlier, but finding a reliable handyman and, and or contractor is just not, it's not always easy. Uh, if you ask around, you know, one person might love them, the next person might not, or, you know, vice versa. So if you're asking a homeowner, hey, do you have anybody that you felt was trustworthy to work on this home? Uh, that could be a great place to start. So ask for reputable contacts and then do your own homework regarding that. So these are just 10 questions that you should be asking the seller slash prior homeowner at probably at closing. Most of the time, this is going to take place at closing. You're sitting as a buyer across from the seller and you're, you know, there is some downtime as the title reps doing their things after everyone's signed or even before as you're waiting for the other party to show up, sometimes they're late, whatever. But there's been many conversations at closing where it's just, hey, just, you know, how long have you lived in the home? And all this, right, you're making small talk. So instead of just small talk, ask these questions to get a better idea of the home that you are basically purchasing. So I hope you found this episode valuable. Share your thoughts in the comments. I, in, I invite you to share what you thought about this episode. And I invite you to follow me on social media. Those links are in the description as well as visit my websites. It's all about realestate.com and servingmichiganseniors.com. I appreciate you watching.